The Ensemble podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Schroeder Investment Management Australia Limited, ABN 2200443274, AFSL 226473, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. Ensemble does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Ready to establish a consistent approach to investing that brings rigour to your team and clarity to your clients? Welcome to the Ensemble Investment Philosophies in Action series. I'm Peter diamond and I'm here to bring you practical insights straight from Australia's top financial advisors. In this series, we cut through the noise and focus on the essential steps to building and then executing a powerful investment philosophy. Hear firsthand from our guests as they share real-world challenges and triumphs, giving you clear, actionable strategies to implement in your own practice. Tune in to the Investment Philosophies in Action series and elevate your financial advising with a philosophy that truly resonates with your clients. For six decades, Schroeder's Australia's investment expertise and agility has helped deliver consistent long-term returns for their local clients. With one of Australia's most experienced on-the-ground research teams, backed by over 220 years of compounded knowledge of global financial markets, Schroeder's clients continue to benefit from their proven investment approach, deep wisdom, and focus on investing beyond tomorrow. Schroeder's Australia manages assets for institutional and wholesale clients across Australian equities, fixed income, multi-asset, and global private market strategies, including private equity. Hello and welcome to this special Ensemble podcast mini-series where we're diving into the practical application of an investment philosophy through wonderful experience of advice practitioners like the one I have here with me today. Now, I'm Peter Diamantidis and the guest joining me here today is based in beautiful Joondalup, just north of Perth, lovely part of the world, is a senior financial planner with Profact Public Accountants and has a Master's in Financial Planning from Griffith University. Welcome, Clint Neese, and thank you so much for agreeing to share your investment philosophy journey with us. Hi, Peter. Quite a day. Happy Friday. This is episode one of the investment philosophy series. And our focus for this episode is that first step, you know, establishing your investment philosophy. And I've got to say, I can't wait to share with the listener how you went about building yours, Clint, because it's a cracker. But before we dive into that, let's just sort of position you and your background so they get some context. So where did you first start in financial advice? What was your journey into financial advice? So I was actually working on the mine sites. Um, uh, it would have been just before the GFC hit, and uh, I realised that that mining wasn't my cup of tea. Um, as much as I enjoyed getting dirty and coming home and just sleeping in filth, um, it, it definitely wasn't my pathway. So I looked at my next options, um, and while I was looking into sort of what to do, I managed to find myself in front of a financial advisor myself to um, seek advice for my personal situation, and uh, it just dawned on me. I was like, "Wow, this guy." Looks like he's got it going on. I'd love to be sitting on the other side of his desk. So um, we um, built up some sort of um, a friendship and a bit of a mentorship, and uh, he pointed me in the right direction of um, getting a diploma. So that started my journey. And um, and then from there, I just uh, started looking around, trying to get into the, um, into the industry, started in the banks, did like the banks, came across uh, a couple of firms who said, Here, here's a script, go out and read this. And... Um, I realised I didn't know what I was talking about, so went down the path of getting to, um, uh, going to university, getting my degree in accounting and financial planning, and um, and then yeah, my journey started off uh, in a very comprehensive practice, um, Stuart Steinman uh, and Partners. Uh, they were mm-hmm. these ahead of sort of other firms that I'd done, sort of dealt with in the past. Um, but from now, I just sort of twiddled my way through. I went and worked at a couple of practices. Um, Gains a really good experience from a variety of different people. Yeah. Um, I, I started in risk to start with. Then I worked in okay. a very comprehensive practice um, uh, who dealt particularly with really well in uh, the investment space. Yeah. Um, and then I worked in another place where it was all that index investing, another place that was all okay. about LICs and direct shares and 
So I had a really good it's range a lot of, of different. Experience. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say though, for you personally, um, like in your spare time, of which you're not currently probably have much, having just had a new bub, um, and congratulations. Um, the is in your spare time, is that sort of person that has like six greens and you're watching markets? Like, are you were you always interested, or was this something you've developed over time being in the industry? It was never really an interest for me. So when I got into fight planning, I thought it was going to be all about strategies, cash loads, budgets, and so on. Um, yeah. And then over time, I realized that it did make up a large portion of what I was actually delivering for clients. And then just as I thought I knew a little bit about investing, um, working at one practice, I realized this is not my world. Um, I I don't follow the investment markets to a T. I follow the news, but right. not exactly what's going on. Uh, the fixed yeah. income space, um, that just goes straight over my head still. Um, I've been yeah. holding a conversation for probably two minutes and it, it just never really interested me. Um, yeah. But at the same time, if you're saying it was really important for clients to have sort of a, a dress in their financial world. Absolutely. So then let's talk about then the trigger that sort of started you down, down the journey of really pulling together your own investment philosophy. You know, was there a change in work or like what was going on that caused this to sort of be lifted to the top of your project list and you thought, you know what, I'm going to have to invest some time in this? Yeah. So for about six or seven years, I was given – sort of like um, the investment piece that we had to deliver to clients. Um, it was it was very much, Clint, this is what we're investing for our clients based on their risk profile. And then I, um, I took the jump into self-ownership um, and I had my own practice and uh, I was just trying to mimic what had already been done in the past. Yep. Um, and then all of a sudden COVID came in and uh, <laughs> turned my world upside down. I'd had sort of years and years of positive um uh, returns on people's portfolios, right. and uh, I didn't know what next. It was easy to go out and say, just stick deep down, it's going to recover and so on, but I had nothing in place, nothing in my mind about how I should react for my clients and myself. Yeah. And then after I'd sort of fumbled my way through there, I eventually sold my business to the place I'm working at now, and there was more than just myself. And uh, right. there was another advisor, and we had conflicting sort of views on how the – um portfolio should be put together. And, and yeah. that was a real key moment where I went, okay, we need to sit down and have a philosophy. We need to make sure that my advice is exactly the same as yours so that if I go on holidays for whatever reason, um, you can still deliver that a client. Yeah, it's an interesting um, trigger, isn't it? Because when you're on your own, like you can say you've got an investment philosophy and you do, of course, like in your head, there's some sort of processing neural pathways that are doing that for you. But it's not until – you've got to deal with the fact that two of you are doing it differently. It becomes clear that there's more work required, you know, because Absolutely. fighting it out doesn't get the result. We've we've got to actually do something. Like we've got to go through a process here to actually get an outcome or otherwise it's always just going to be different and surely that's not ideal. <laughs> exactly right. Like um, there was a case where um, I had presented advice to a client and they came back a couple of months later when I was on holidays and – um. And then the advice that was implemented went from an active style of investment to an index. Right. And uh, I just couldn't understand it of all my research that I did on the client and all the conversations, uh, education and so on that it could change. Yeah. And uh, it was really evident that every single advisor has a different sort of um, view of the investment markets, a different approach, yeah. uh, differences and biases. And um, yeah, so I thought I need to sit down, write down everything that's um sort of important to me, make sure that my employer was comfortable with it, and then we just ran with it. Yeah, okay. So did you just sort of the two of you in a room, you know, Hunger Games style, last man standing, like how did that conversation go? What did you do? Did you have a whiteboard where you were sort of drawing it out? Like how did you go through that process? So I actually sat down thinking there was going to be a meeting about um, sort of an open discussion on how we're going to address this. But it was just a pat on the back saying, Clint, I, I trust you. You'll um, put something together that's meaningful. Uh, good luck. <laughs> May the force be with you. Off you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, I jumped on my computer and I thought, okay, let's not reinvent the wheel. Let's see if there's any templates out there that can um, sort of guide me through the process. Um, yeah. There were some excellent pieces out there. Um, I really like the uh, the dimension guys that have got – or dimensional guys – um, they've got sort of like these 10 little points about how they go about yep. their investments. Um, yep. Vanguard offers some really good material. Ensemble has excellent material. Yeah. And um, I was just sort of trying to piece it all together that um, 
sort of resonated well with me. And yeah, yeah, just a couple of hurdles here and there. Right, and once again, you're sort of doing this in your own head too. It's very hard to brainstorm or get clear on things when it's just you talking to yourself. Like that's not yeah. an easy thing to do, is it? <laughs> it's it's even weirder when you um, respond back to yourself. So yeah. <laughs> People get concerned around you. <laughs> and it's interesting, isn't it? Because something that I know, even in the ensemble, we've got the there's a paper on there about investment philosophy and encourages you to debate with your peers. But I don't know about you, but look, I've got a background in mergers and acquisitions. I've got an actuarial degree. Like all of this should give me confidence in this. But even I'm sort of wary of bringing these things up with our peers because. It can be a judgmental environment, can't it? Like you can feel like, oh, they're going to judge me because I'm not sure about which way I'm going to go or how to enunciate this. Was that something that was maybe held you back a bit as well? Absolutely, um, because we're, we're training to ask the right questions. And then when uh, you sit down with another advisor and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking about um, implementing for my uh, philosophy, they go, how come? And uh, yeah. after being asked seven times, why are you doing what you're doing and you can't answer it? Um, you really start yep. to doubt uh, basically what you're proposing. If I can't explain it to an advisor, how am I going to explain it to a client? <laughs> right. You know, and I do think um, something I've realized recently is, the, you know, the art of debate has actually been lost. Like that was actually considered the height of intelligence hundreds of years ago was the ability to just debate something, like just talk it through and and have opposing views and use it as a way to stretch your mind. Whereas now it's like you should know. There's no debate. You should just know. You know, it's like, well, that's actually not helpful. It's not growth. You know, we should be able to talk these things out. So what I find interesting is who you therefore decided to debate with and converse with. So what was the, um, what was the well, it's not a person, but what was the tool you used to start having those conversations? Well, I was, I was definitely tired of talking to myself. Um, I found that I was very biased <laughs> towards um, sort of high growth um, sort of strategies and whatnot. And uh, right. the new business that I came into had a lot of um sort of pre-retirees and retirees. So I knew that talking to myself wasn't going to work. So, um, you know, I jumped onto chat GPT and um, right. had a really good chat. And uh, <laughs> it, it wasn't as straightforward as most people think. Um, right. If you haven't used AI and, 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 and the tool in the past, it's all about how you structure your questions. And uh, right. it's, it's a learning machine where you have to keep on feeding information um, and don't settle on the first hand. Yeah. And I'm I'm betting too. You had to keep on giving it context, more and more context for what you're asking, um, so that it could then yeah, so it can frame its answer right. So was that then in part when you? So first of all, let's talk about the mechanics of that. You were using the free version of ChatGPT. I am yeah. Okay, good. So it's anybody can go on and do this. You can just go in there and and interact, uh, which is fantastic. So if the listener hasn't used ChatGPT at all. Well, what have you been doing would be my first question. But second question <laughs> is the thing to realize actually is that this is, it's a chat function. It's literally something where you chat like you would on Facebook Messenger, right? So this is something where it's it's set up that way. Um, and so I'm curious about the prompts you gave it initially. Like what? how did you start to draw or get it to draw out from you how you thought about investing in markets? Yeah, so there was, um, there was two pieces that I had to sort of I put together. Uh, first, I had to get it to learn that I'm a, an Australian financial advisor. Um, okay. I'm looking at putting together an investment philosophy um, as part of a marketing strategy to provide to clients um, and also an internal um, sort of um, documentation so that whenever new advisors or anyone comes into the business, they also understood what that sort of investment advice we're providing. Yeah. Um, I then had to I started asking questions and I was getting nowhere. I was getting very uh, sort of templated answers. Um, so right. I decided to look into the the investment managers that we currently use. Mm -hmm. um, and it took me three years to feel comfortable with them. I researched them in and out. I spoke with them over numerous times. And um, at the end of the day, I felt really comfortable with their approach, their philosophy. I asked them to help me build out my philosophy in the past and they sort of were like, well, just copy our stuff. And I went, okay. Yeah. So I copied their stuff, put it into ChatGPT. And the way I did it was um, I said, I basically said, I'm ignorant in investment. My understanding is low. I need you to respond with no filler words. 
and um, help you understand why I would like this investment manager. Um, right. And I've really had to bring it back because if I said that I'm an Australian financial advisor and so on, the answer that comes back is very comprehensive. Yes. The last thing I really want to do is provide material to a client that they're going to go this way over their head. Yeah. So it learned, it learned that the answer that I wanted was a very simple approach. And then if it was too simple, I asked for it to be a little bit more comprehensive. So I found it yep. easy going um, in that direction rather than um, and then, yeah, it was, it was as simple as saying um, the investment manager has five core philosophies. Um, and I said, please understand this. So I copied the first one and I said, do you understand that? that you just come back saying, yes, what's the next yep. one? And so on and so on and so on. And, um, mm-hmm. and eventually it came back with um, sort of all the answers. And I said, can you combine your understanding of their philosophy and why it would be beneficial to my clients? And help me build an investment philosophy that will go into a marketing material on one page. Um, and it did that. And once the answer nice. came out, um, I read it and I thought, it looks okay. Um, I'm going to send it to the the investment manager and say, what do you think of this? Right. And um, they were to come back and say, hey, that's really great. However, you're missing um, our preference for int- uh, sorry, Australian shares. And okay. um, you have the little bits and pieces about tax. Yep, yep. So I took their answer, I'll put it back into chat GPT because it does say your responses um, on the side. So it's got different yes. to go back to. And I reckon I've gone back to um, the, the investment philosophy topic probably at least once a week at the moment over the last six months. Yeah. Um, and I'm always fine-tuning it based on my discussions with clients. Um, they might come back and go, oh, look, I really like this. don't understand it. So we just refresh that. Yeah. So. What I found is that by providing clients with this one-page investment policy, um, their understanding if we are a good fit. So we even had a client come back and go, "Oh, so you don't do Bitcoin? You don't look at the um, sort of the petty stocks and whatnot? That won't meet my expectations." And we just shook hands, and, and um, I was able to refer awesome. them on to another advisor who, who did. So it saves a lot of time and um, helps meet expectations. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And the interesting thing, you know, we use it a lot, well, for all sorts of things, but for, for writing of, of lots of things. And the thing I've realized too is we never use it enough. Like we never take it far enough. So even going, okay, we, you've come up with that great one page and now I want like five headline items of the beliefs using my background in mining as a, an anchor and storytelling point with language that would suit a blah, 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 blah. So it might be whoever your niche is. And it will turn those five beliefs into fun, catchy phrases you could use. Like it's, you know, ChatGPT can do all of that thinking for you. It's so powerful in that sense from a cop- copywriting sense, you know. It captures your ideas and then copyrights it for you. It's really it's powerful. funny you mentioned that because there was a, there was a client who was a, um, a lawyer and um, I, I thought this guy's going to want detail. So I actually changed our investment philosophy and said um, – can you please write this out for a lawyer to read? And then it actually came back with a whole bunch of um, different a- acts and references to acts. And I'm like, what are you doing? I'm going to ask for that. And um, <laughs> I thought, I'm just going to send it to him. It's got no relevance to the investment piece that I want to sort of deliver. But he came back and it was really impressed with it. Nice, nice. And I mean, even then, that's that's interesting. So you sort of got it to do a one page. You could ask as part of that, you know, create a one pager version. Now I'd like you to create a 10-page brochure length version as well. Like you could just get it to create the iterations of this in terms of the, you know, the the text you would need for that um, and it would save you all exactly. that time that we then go, oh, God, you know, that's another job yeah. to do. And, and I also fed that into our, um, our risk profile questionnaire so that I made sure the questions were able to sort of like align with our philosophy and we got permission nice. from our, our licensee to sort of update the 1980s questions that we um, were asked, asked to use. Yep. And um, it then became really easy to identify whether or not the client would suit our um, our approach. Nice. And so you've got this text that's produced. You've got your one pager. Did, did you then do anything with that in terms of the way what the client sees? Like, did you turn that into anything in terms of what you use for the clients to look at? Yeah. So we've, um, we've included in our like um, introduction pack. Um, we yeah, simplify okay. in our um, our initial presentation as well. Um, and I think it's really important to. Um, sort of focused on that for about five minutes in our initial meeting 
because I do like to let people know that it's not me making the investment decisions for them. Right. Um, my job is completely different um, than well, my personal job is very different to um, making those decisions, and um, and that's what yeah. we've partnered. With. Perfect. And so, have you since you first? So you said you've had that um, that particular chat with ChatGPT open consistently. So since you first sort of did that initial work, first of all, how long do you reckon you spent conversing for that initial period when you got that first cut of it, do you think? I would like to think it would be under an hour. Okay. Okay. So once you'd sort of nailed the, gee, I'm going to feed in, you know, the dimensional stuff and, you know, so so I'll feed in the information I've got from elsewhere, I'll start conversing with it. It didn't actually take that long to get to something that you felt was pretty comprehensive that you could get them to take a look at. Yeah. So it is. There were, there were a couple of times I had to log in and um, uh, sort of revamp things. So I was expecting a 30-second, please type me an investment philosophy based on blah, blah, blah. Yep. Um, and I gave up like, within sort of a minute or two thinking, no, this isn't going to work for me. And then as I learned <laughs> a little bit more about AI and how, how it learns, um, I kept going back to it and just adding little fixes here and there. Yep. So yeah, okay. I'd say, yeah, I'd say, yeah, around about an hour total. Right, um, but I reckon if I started from scratch, uh, scratch now, um, probably twenty minutes. Yeah, okay. And have you actually updated it much since then? Is it is it just small tweaks that you've made to it, or clarity? Because have you, as you've been describing it to somebody else, you've realised there's an element missing, or have you not changed it at all, really? Yeah, I've I fine tuned just some of the way. It's, um, uh, we've got a comprehensive version and um, very simplified version. Well. Okay. So we can generally gauge what kind of what kind of person we're going to be sitting in front of, but we can kind of make some assumptions as to what we're going to expect in a document. Awesome. And so, you know, thinking about um, the process, then what what was the most challenging thing about the whole exercise? You know, anything that was a major blockage at any point? Like, what was the part that that was most difficult? Do you think looking back? Oh, getting the information out of my head. Um, <laughs> if like it's, it's the whole thing about why do you do what you do, and uh, when you have when you're forced to write it down, you're like, I don't know how to get this information out of my head. It's just it's just how it is. Um, yeah. So you can actually ask ChatGPT to provide an answer and also reply with um, three additional questions that can help complete the answer. Yep. So you can ask it to prompt for more information. It can deliver a better outcome. Um, and yeah, I've only okay. just recently started that approach. It's interesting, isn't it? Because like you say, there is the – so there's a white paper on Ensemble that's about how to sort of build that or approach or discover your investment philosophy and core beliefs. Then, you know, you could do worse than than extracting portions of that, shove it into chat DPT and then ask it to ask you questions so that it can draw out what your philosophies and beliefs are. Like let it try and do that for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Right? You, can, you can tell chat DPT – that its role is a journalist extracting information from and it'll take on right. that persona. Um, 100%. It's been estimated at that. Yeah, and, and that's probably, I mean, it's, it's. Um, I know we all struggle with these new things as we embark on them, but it truly is down to our own creativity or imagination. Um, and the more you play with it for silly stuff, I think the more useful it becomes with this useful stuff because you can sort of see how it applies. I mean, I learned the, the sort of tone of voice or the style you're talking about, like giving it an age or, or you know, an understanding level and making sure it responds at that level. That's really important. I learned that by asking it to, you know, build a poem for me as if, as if somebody famous had written it or in their tone of voice or in their rapping style or like it became clear to me, well, hold on we can really define a whole lot of things about how we want it to respond. You know, yeah. we can, yeah, we can really get it um, to to really think, put itself in somebody's shoes and respond in a certain way. So you mentioned the risk profile questions and I'm really interested in like the reality of this. You've now got your one pager and your more detailed one and you're, you've got new clients coming in. Are you sort of doing – are you finding what's happened is you've got your questions, but you're doing the education almost now concurrently, like the, because you've got a reference point in this thing that you're trying to get across, that that sort of risk profile question isn't quite as clunky or as awkward as it was before? I'm finding completion time a lot quicker. It's okay. Like I had some people ask a question about, um, I don't quite understand this um, question seven for, for whatever reason. 
and um, and since providing them the documentation, saying, look, if you don't, if you're unsure about any of these questions and how to respond, have a look at our yeah. investment piece because there's ten ten paragraphs there that all relate to the ten questions that you're going to be asked. So it also allows me to stay focused in the meeting and say, we're going to go through this together. Um, I want you to have time to complete the risk profile questionnaire rather than me forcing you to do it now in our tight little session. Um, it allows them to think a little bit more about how they're going to respond. Yeah, absolutely. And what's interesting is from a compliance perspective, you know, sort of know your client, but also, you know, be confident they understand, you know, this is more powerful because you're giving them you're giving them the opportunity to absorb something and then almost reflect it back to you. You know, like it's 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 actually more instructional in that sense rather than just an out of the blue question about risk, you know, yeah, a risk correct. profile question. And we all know that they yeah. sort of suck, right? I mean, we've all accepted that. But but what I like about having having a, a great way to get across your philosophy is it's almost like an anchor to ask those questions from, you know, yeah. so that they can then, you know, frame their responses. Because yeah, I've never liked the um Choose the closest answer to what you think is the right one. Right. And yeah. Let, let's make sure the questions are asked correctly. And go yeah, there. correct. 100%. So knowing what you know now and having done this and, and clearly you're more experienced with the tool as well and you've gone through this process of enunciating more clearly what your beliefs are, is there anything you do differently you know, anything, say, to advisors that are just starting on this journey and they think, oh, that sounds like fun, maybe I should start, you know, with chat GPT as, 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 you know, understanding my own investment philosophy. What should they keep in mind? What would you have done differently if you could? I would have loved, I've watched a lot more videos um, just on YouTube about the um, the fundamentals of chat GPT. Um, okay. I think so the first couple of months that I started using it this way back in January, uh, I it was hitting this for me. Um, I yeah. thought, oh, this this looks good. I'm not getting the answers that I want. And it was only when I started watching videos on a regular basis that I understood it's a little bit more complex than you, you think it is. So yeah, yeah. It, it, and there's a lot of content creators out there making some brilliant stuff. Um, and just the little quick ten minute videos of certain prompts to use and whatnot um, is really better. And then um, and then if you're using it on a daily basis, like I am. Um, you pick up your, your tips and tricks over, over time. Uh, you can always yeah, go back sure. to the old questions that you've asked. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And if you're in that one chat, then like you say, it remembers, like it's it's got that context, you know, so you can sort of keep on referring back to what you'd mentioned before and it's going to understand that, you know, and, and sort of use that as a as a basis. And the one thing I would also add is um, the bottom left um, – Stuff down the bottom of the left of uh, ChatGPT, there's actually um, the settings to allow ChatGPT to understand who you are and the right. prompts that you always want to use. And I say, please use um, Australian English. Actually, don't use Australian English. Come back with get a cover. Um, use <laughs> uh, UK English um, in all your responses, so it doesn't come back with all the Z and um, American style English. So. And you can tell it your niche, you can tell it like it's all of that and you're right, it can be sort of as a given in the settings of chat GPT so that then it just does that every time. Um, and the more fulsome you are, the better. So if you do have a deep niche, I mean, I mentioned mining just as an example, if the, if you are only serving those clients, then you'd put that in that settings bit because it will make sure that language sneaks its way in all the time, you know, and so it's really powerful. Once you start doing that, you're surprised at how much it remembers to do. I know, right? It's like, well, you, you know a lot. Um, yeah. But also, you can add in, um, uh, right, all your responses in a compliant manner and, and so on. Sometimes I'll be added in, you're a para planner in Australia rather than a financial advisor. I found the answers a little bit more clearer um, than if you're an advisor. Um, but yeah, it depends on sort of the, um, the question I'm asking it. Yeah, okay. And do you, when you sort of started rolling it out and you were using it, did you find you almost, you know, slipped back into old ways or you found, oh, no, it's not going to work, there's an exception needed? Like was there any was there any change of behaviour you sort of had to learn or stick with as you rolled out the philosophy? You discovered a bit about yourself or how you've done it historically that meant, oh, God, I, I, you know, I just need to commit to this? Yeah, I remember the first time I um, handed over the investment philosophy to a client. And the fact that the the blood just raced to my face and I felt so hot and I was like, you know what, don't worry about this, this don't read it. 
I knew then I wasn't comfortable with it, and yeah. um, but I knew I had to stick to it. So once I was comfortable with the uh, the piece that I'd put, I had to deliver it to a client. Uh, yeah. It was only um, it was only yesterday I had a phone call from a client where I did not give this investment um, philosophy to, and um, I didn't go through um, sort of the ins and outs of how we um, how we invest people's money, and um, they called up querying about oh how come we're not getting double digit returns? Uh, how come we're not yeah. doing this this and um, yeah so and straight away I went because I didn't stick to providing this yep. philosophy. I didn't realize how important it was until. I didn't have it, so. Yeah, absolutely, right? And it's, look, it's interesting too you say about, you know, having this and having confidence in it. It's one thing that I think um, it actually came up in the Ensemble PD day, the recent day, is is the importance as peers that we create a safe space, like in, in a perfect world, and maybe even going forward you'd be more comfortable doing that where, okay, here's my draft. Guys, I'd love to share it with you just to get your take because part of that's building your confidence then for the client, isn't it? It's like, well, the, a couple of peers that I know and and think similarly to me and everything, they've taken a look and, yep, got some good feedback, but I'm feeling much better about it. So then you're more likely to lean into it with the client too, you know, so it's feeling like it's a bit short up. It sounds like you're challenging me to upload my philosophy onto the uh, <laughs> platform. Game on, people. <laughs> Okay, I'll be Look, judged. honestly, <laughs> honestly, I think the more we do that, the better it is. I mean, the ensemble space is so powerful for how many resources are shared, and you know, lots of people are happy to put theirs up. And I think it's a um, but I do acknowledge this is one of those topics that you know advisors feel particularly naked about. So even if you you know reach out via direct message on the platform, I think you know anybody listening there, don't be shy. You know, good people will happily take a look, give you their take, particularly if you ask them a specific question like, hey, this is what I was trying to get across. These are the type of people I serve. Can you take a look? You know, you're not asking for the debate. You're just asking them to say, does it? Does this make sense? You know, <laughs> have I have I pulled it together well? Well, fortunately, I've actually unprepared um, all the prompts I've used to build my philosophy. Um, so quite happy to share that with the, uh, with the group. Oh, fantastic. Look, so anybody anybody that's keen to get those prompts, please um, absolutely reach out to Clint on the platform because that can just get you started, right? I mean, it's it's so powerful. And, I, and you know, we've spoken before and I remember you saying one of the other things you could ask is you might be further down the track, you've, you've nailed it. You could even ask ChatGPT, okay, you've got that philosophy. What are the disadvantages of this philosophy? Like get it to cross-check you. Right, get it to highlight um, where the holes might be, or, or you know, where something might be missing, or you know, anything like that. Like, get it to do that hard yards too. That's a really good idea. Um, you really get it to challenge you, and um, you never know what it might identify. Correct, and even if it just prompts you to go and ask the question of one of the fund managers, absolutely. You know, we've got all these people on hand. Um, this is just trying to get you to take that next level of thinking without having to do all that heavy lifting yourself. So, you know, it's powerful. Now, you mentioned actually being able to pass on this sort of insight and and the beliefs, say, to a new advisor. Do you, you know, have you had to do that yet? Is that the intention that you'd really get to the point that you've documented this well enough that you could then hand it over to a new hire and go, hey, this is how we approach things, you know, take a look at that and let's have a conversation afterwards? Yeah, it's a good question because um- – our, our next step, hopefully, is to um, sort of onboard a, a new entrant, and um, they're obviously going to come fresh out of university um, with a whole bunch of new ideas. And um, it'll be interesting to see if they can pick up this document and go, "Okay, so this is how we're going to be moving forward with our investment approach," or if they've had some conflicting sort of information that were, you know, sort of a ten-week course. The idea will be to give them so much information that they'll feel comfortable with the philosophy themselves. Yep. There'll be education behind, like for the advisor behind the philosophy because obviously I'm not yes. going to give all the education to clients. It'll just be flooded with more documentation pages that they won't read. Yeah. But it's definitely going to be one of those um, pieces that I want to put together where if I'm away for months in Hawaii or whatever the case is and a new person does come on board, they've got the right material there to sort of with what we expect. 
And look, it's interesting you say that because we've got, you know, we're going, we're all going to be nurturing and developing young advisors as they come through. Like we're all hoping that that PY and all that sort of thing will be a significant part of the growth of the industry. You know, imagine then you've got your philosophy, you help chat GPT build that out into an educational piece. I mean, you could ask it to help you design that. You could even ask it, you know, what of the top 20 in books about investing or, or from, you know, the top investors, there's a whole lot that sort of frame thinking about investment philosophy, you know, which would be the most appropriate that would match our philosophy that would be a good entree into it. So you could actually design almost an experience for a young advisor to go through to, you know, read this, then we're going to have a conversation, read that, then we're going to have a conversation, but we design it with chat GPT's help. Yeah. And you can go one step further with, um, Instead of using ChatGPT, there's a, um, a software out there called UAI, um, mm-hmm. which is where you can actually uh, input a whole bunch of different books, different PDF books. It will learn each of those sort of like approaches and whatnot, and then you can ask it direct questions, and it'll only pull information from those uh, uh, sort of those, those PDFs. And um, my intention is to eventually do that with uh, sort of investment manuals and budgeting manuals and and use that to help train or not train but educate clients on certain topics. Yeah. But I'm sure you can use that with um, uh, the people coming in the next years. And because it is, I mean, it's it's an interesting, it's such an interesting thing because there's so much insight historically and, of course, all of us get a better feel for our like our core beliefs through storytelling. Like that's how we it's either experience, which you've got to have lived, which, you know, we only have the lot, like the current years we've lived, or it's other people's experiences through storytelling. And so using the power of books and like you say, even absorbing that into a tool in AI and then asking it questions, it's a really powerful way to accelerate your learning and understanding. Yeah. You know, that's a way to get really deeply into those things, isn't it? That's super powerful. Oh, yeah. And if you don't have time to read those books, you can use Perplexity, which um, summarizes full toy. Yeah, absolutely. And I can see, you know, it'd be interesting. So, you know, there's the methodology you all have ended up coming up with, which is what, you know, that you then use to invest clients' money. But underneath all of that will have been, you'll have unearthed some core beliefs, like beliefs about markets and about things. That could be an interesting hiring tool as well, right? Like, I mean, you'd want to have somebody, they may not be quite as across the methodology, but you'd want them to sort of probably have the same underlying beliefs, right? So we're there's probably not many people hiring advisors now that actually test them for their core investment beliefs, but that's interesting as a way to hire. I, I have been questioned on my investment beliefs in the past and I found it okay. very confronting because I was like, I don't have the answer. <laughs> and the questions are directly asking my values and beliefs. Uh, that was another red face mocking me. <laughs> but, um, but, but you would expect that, you know, more junior? Right, and that would make sense. But if somebody out there is about to hire a senior advisor, like I'd be adding those questions in right now because they're well established. Right, those things are anchored already. You know, it's like whether yeah, they've enunciated if, them well or not. Yeah, because if you have an index style um, approach and um, they've got an active sort of mindset, then they're not going to be a good fit. Right, it's just not, and that that's not saying one one or the other is right or wrong. It's about fit, just like hiring isn't for anything. It's a cultural. I mean, really, when you think about it, this investment philosophy is almost cultural, like other things are for a business. Definitely, you know. Yeah, so yeah. It, it makes sense to match those. Um, do you think that you really had so like like you said then you know you've got to the point now where you're like oh, wish I'd sent that out before, but do you feel your confidence in enunciating questions and and dealing with those queries those because it's really about when clients are concerned right that's where this stuff can really come out to play is when they're worried are you feeling that it just really does feel far more like you feel more strength in that confidence now that you have this to go back to it's that reference point yeah and, and that's what i found out that i hadn't actually given the um the client the um the investment piece um or the plus to be as i said remember how i gave you this and I remember how i said that and um that pushed back a bit no, you didn't. And I thought, okay, let me let me go through it with you over the phone. Um, and I backed it up with an email. So the important thing was I didn't need to refer back to the philosophy because I understood it so well and it was so ingrained in me because yeah. I'm actually providing a day out. Um, and yeah. I actually felt really confident with the way I responded. Rather than being defensive, it was being informative, yes. educational. Yes, and that is the difference, isn't it? So it's you're not reacting. You're like, oh, we've got a learning process to go through here. Let me take you through it. 
fantastic, you know, and here's the structure and here's the science behind it. Like it really does give you that bouncy ball to follow then, um, yeah. which is far yeah. more powerful. And they're extremely comfortable at the end of the conversation. They yeah. ask a lot of questions and um, because I had a lot of research behind me, the document, um, I was very confident with um, sort of what I was delivering. And look, the, you know, you can take these things to the nth degree. You can now feed in text into some AI that turns it into PowerPoints for you. Like there's just so many things you can do now. Um, the, oh, it's expensive to create a brochure is no longer an excuse for anything. <laughs> so um, the combination of tools like ChatGPT and others, including Canva, you know, like all of this, you could have something really slick and that would really help your clients understand who you are and when you where you're coming from and what experience they're going to get. So, you know, don't be shy shy of any of that. Is there any last sort of insights or or where you plan on taking this? So you mentioned education for another advisor. Is there any other evolutions of the client materials that you're thinking into the future? Uh, I'm definitely going to reach up on my address philosophy document. I've, I've started compiling all the information from one path, Zurich, Tau, AA, and so on. And I'm really trying to find something that resonates with me. Um, mm. Because everyone's dread philosophy so much as well. Um, but being able to give them uh, sort of direct piece as well with a list of questions, uh, I'm sure when we come to giving it the, the advice that we're providing, there's going to be no pushback. We've identified everything that they that's important to them. Yeah, absolutely. Look, so so this is, you know, the using this approach you've used for investments is valid for anything, folks. Um, I think investments are a great starting point because for most of us, there's a implied language. There's a, you know, we've always we've sort of got a base, basis for that. Um, it, you started in insurance, so you might be more comfortable with that, but for lots that might be harder to start with, but it's a great, these tools you can use for all of this stuff. Um, so that we can communicate so much better. Um, I'm just surprised look, that I didn't use it for this uh, this session. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly right. What were you thinking, young man? Oh, this is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being so open with your process uh, and you know the offer to share the prompts with anybody who reaches out. Listener, you will be crazy not to look, reach out to Clint on the Ensemble platform. Um, he's super happy to share that. And to be honest, even if you've got a philosophy or Already, if you fed in your current philosophy and then you could tweak it um, within ChatGPT, this can be used to upgrade, doesn't just need to be used to create. So you've been so generous with your time, Clint. I really appreciate it. And I know this is going to be so valuable for the listeners on their own investment philosophy journey. No problem at all. 